Hello, everybody. Welcome. I see everyone trickling in. I'll give everybody a few moments to get in here, but we are so excited today. This is our fourth and final session in our What Amazing Math Looks Like series. So while we're waiting for everyone to join, just drop in the chat where you're from, what your title is, what you're excited about learning today, um, and what amazing engagement looks like to you. Uh, we just hit 100. Woo. I know, that was quick. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Julia, hello from hello from Chicago. I was just in Chicago, uh, talking math, not too far from Midway there. Oh, New Orleans. Our whole team was down there in December. Tucson, hang on, let me see it. Okay, I'm in Phoenix, so you just won um, my attention here. Oh, this is great. I know, I see Ash North Carolina, I'm in Charlotte, so very excited for all North Carolina people to join. We're, Durham, we're let's go. 115, look at us. Holy I know, man. everyone is like an hour, oh, hi, Lynn. I go there every summer. Look at you guys, North Carolinians. Wow, Philly, I'll be in Philly next week. Thanks for coming, Catherine. Key West too, geez. Oh, we got a, I teach in Phoenix, but live in Little, oh. Okay, I'm loving this too. Wow. Snowing in Wisconsin today. I'm supposed to go to Wisconsin tomorrow. So, um, Tony, I'm supposed to be up in Green Lake for the math conference this week. So thanks for telling me what I need to pack. Oh my goodness. I know, I love all of this. There's people from all over. We're at 1.30 now. Oh, geez. <laughs> All right, I think we can officially get started. Welcome again, everybody. We are so excited that you're here on this beautiful Monday. I'm just talking about what amazing math looks like, especially amazing engagement. Some um, housekeeping tips before we start. If you would like to access closed captioning, just hit the CC button in the bottom tray and show subtitles. You can participate and make comments anytime via the chat, but if you want to ask questions specifically for James to answer at the end, um, it is best to use the Q&A feature. And you'll receive a certificate of attendance at the um, in the next couple of days, hopefully tomorrow, but if not the day after, and a webinar recording via Zoom email. So just look out for that in your inbox. And now to introduce our wonderful speaker today, James Oliver is an experienced educator content specialist and instructional coach with over 14 years of experience around K-12 math and science. Um, he currently works as a STEM product specialist with Amplify. We are very excited he's here today. And he delivers high impact motivational presentations and trainings focused on curriculum and pedagogical shifts, e-learning, regional trends, and PD services. So he's done it all, he knows what we need, and he is here to tell us what amazing engagement looks like. Without further ado, I'll stop sharing. James, over to you. Awesome, and can you give me sharing oh, opportunities here? Absolutely. I think we're good yeah. now. We're all good there, perfect. Oh my goodness, happy Monday. I was just telling Shannon right before we kicked off the webinar, I am on my second venti coffee here. Uh, what that means for all of us, um, I don't know if it's going to be engaging, but you're absolutely going to have some really bad dad jokes. Uh, I'm a father of three, and I test them out on all of my kiddos as much as possible. Um, also, I just have to say the amount of attendees that we have today is uh, delightful, um, and it's great to see you all here. Laura from Rocky Point, I'll be down in Rocky Point in June, so I feel like I should come say hi to many of you uh, after this webinar. But thanks again for attending and thanks for putting up with uh, my dad jokes. And uh, let's talk about what amazing engagement looks like in the classroom. So uh, what's funny is when I was prepping for this session, I did a lot of research. Um, I have plenty of publications, articles, anything and everything that you could think of around K-12 math. And I started pulling out all of my resources and I thought, wow, there is a lot of opinions on what awesome engagement looks like. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at my screen here, 
Um, it seems that there's a lot of opinions as to what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like, um, and who's right, right? At the end of the day, we do need to figure out what is engagement and, and also what is at the front of engagement. So I'm going to throw myself under the bus here for a second. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures of me as a teacher. Um, and like I said, I'm okay with being a little self-deprecating here, but uh, this first image, this is me. Um, yes, I dressed up like that for school. I was getting the kids excited, I hoped, around standardized testing because it's always really fun, right? Or maybe during the holidays, I would dress like this or get the students excited and I dress like a Ninja Turtle. Uh, they even called me DJ Four Eyes at school. So um, I was the local DJ at my school. And even when I was on bus duty, I always tried to keep it silly and really get the students excited about, you know, being in the classroom, even if I had to dress like a dork. Even on my walls, I would use things like Justin Bieber posters to get the students to just feel comfortable and, and know that they were in a comfortable space. Uh, but here's the thing. When we think about engagement, um, I could tell you when I left the classroom, I thought that meant I needed to be the entertainer, right? Um, I, I felt like Russell Crowe in Gladiator, where it was just like after every lesson, I'm like, are you not entertained by what's going on here? Then I started to really kind of get into uh, my craft. I'm sure for all of you seasoned teachers, we're starting to realize this is not the way to do it. Um, I did start out in the classroom just like this, um, right there up at the whiteboard, you know, procedurally solving um, anything. And, and I thought this is how we were gonna engage the students. And what I'd like you to do just really quick in the chat, before we actually experience what uh, we do here at Amplify with Desmos Math, I'm just kind of curious, based on your own formative assessing, how do we actually know that students are engaged in our lessons? So just throw in the chat, I'm kind of curious, you know, just what are some tools, some ways that you feel like you've seen engagement, things you look for, um, listen for, um, strategies, tips, techniques, what are monitoring? Okay, eye contact, heads down, right? Discussion, chatting. Ooh, I like the excited tone, Connor, because um, you're exactly right. There could be class conversations that doesn't necessarily mean they're engaged in them, right? Um, asking questions, these are great. I almost wish I you know what, we are recording this, so I'm gonna be able to steal a lot of yours for my next webinar. Um, oh, and then I see some people that are just promoting Desmos here. So thank you for doing that, jeez. Uh, you're exactly right. Uh, with a lot, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of stuff that we're gonna talk about today. Um, when I would be you know, doing that teacher-directed learning, how would I know that students were engaged? Uh, this, right here, right? hands. If they're all raising their hands, they must be into this lesson. They must absolutely be entertained or engaged with what we're talking about. If you look up at the board right now, um, we're adding unlike denominator fractions. I don't know about you, but um, I'm pretty sure all those hands were up because we were videotaping and they felt like they had to be on because I've never seen a whole class that engaged around solving addition of, of fractions. Uh, so let's let's be a little honest with ourselves here. Um, when we think about teacher directed learning, um, just some you know quick checklist of the traditional way of what we would look for as teachers is you know are they paying attention? Oh, do they have their big notebook out? Are they taking notes? Are they listening? Connor said, are they asking questions? But also that tone, or what kind of tone do they have when they're asking those questions? Um, you know, but if you really look at this, this column of bullet points, they really do follow, fall into one silo. And that is that the teacher is driving the story, right? Um, and there's a lot of misconceptions around how we generate engagement in the classroom. And just to kind of bumper sticker or book in what we're talking about here, we as teachers feel like we have to provide the engagement. And instead, we need to make this shift towards, you know what, the students, the content, the tasks, the classroom structure, 
that really should be providing our engagement. Uh, some of the biggest misconceptions that I've heard when I'm working with teachers around engagement, and these are actual quotes. Um, oh, and also because, you know, if we wanna make a PowerPoint really engaging, we're also gonna have the most ridiculous animations pop up for these quotes. So um, I promise I know how to work with PowerPoint. I'm not using these 1990s animations because I just learned about them. Um, so <laughs> uh, this is a great one. I'm a seasoned teacher. I know when they're engaged. Now, yes, you absolutely know your students, but you don't necessarily know their feelings around that convert. They absolutely could be talking math with another student. And Connor said it best there about their tone. Are, are they actually excited about those conversations? And, and to Michelle's point in the chat, student choice. Did they have choice around that conversation? Let's look at this next one. They definitely are engaged. Look at their test scores, right? Um, these are some massive misconceptions around student engagement. Um, they look like they're having fun. I don't know about you, but every time I would turn around with my uh, when I would turn around to face the class, it felt like they were always scrambling and looking like they were on task. They're pretty good at uh, um, tricking us. So just because they might look engaged, that doesn't mean that they actually are. Uh, and just one more with this really fun animation um, is that teachers, again, are the source of engagement and they really shouldn't be. So I did show you that picture of me standing up there. Um, when I started to shift my teaching and really started to see a bigger change in the classroom and, and see not only test scores go up, but actual um, opinions on math. And when they would walk into the class, did they look like they wanted to be there? What really changed for me as a teacher, and I'll just show you a video of one of my classes, is student-centered learning. The students driving the experience and getting me off stage and absolutely turning the students into uh, the center of instruction and turning me more into that facilitator. Um, and let me just tell you really quick about what they're doing here. They, uh, I asked them, you know, we're, we're gonna be working with decimals. What are you into? I straight up asked them and they said, food. I go, okay, well, we're gonna bring in menus and you're gonna bring in a menu from your favorite restaurant. They were immediately engaged, right? They had choice. They got to bring in something that is meaningful to them, and they drove uh, the learning experience here in the classroom. Um, I mentioned this because today we're going to talk a lot about Desmos Math and how it brings engagement into the classroom, but the last thing I want you to think of when you walk away or turn off your uh, Zoom today is that um, Desmos Math is the only solution. I will tell you it has a lot of embedded supports to alleviate you having to create these types of tasks and this type of learning. So uh, if we were to kind of compare that teacher-directed learning that we were talking about earlier, uh, and we were to kind of compare it to that student-centered learning, uh, these are the big differences. Uh, when you are looking at a classroom that is centered on those students, um, you know, really driving the learning experience, you're gonna see them reading critically. You're gonna see them creating, planning, problem solving. Uh, they're going to be discussing. They're actually going to be debating. And debating is so good when we think about discourse. Um, performing, presenting. Um, you, you know, I don't have to read everything on this slide, but this is, uh, if you want to screenshot this, that's fine. Um, we'll also have recordings of this webinar. But these are things I would put on a checklist when I'm looking at lesson planning. Are, how many of these things are we doing in today's 45 or 60 minute lesson? How many more can I integrate into this lesson? Can I change a task so that there's more of them and less of me? Those are things to think about uh, when you're driving this type of student experience into the classroom. So before we get online and, and experience Desmos and, and really show you how this could change um, you know, your students' uh, experiences or change what you're currently using, um, I do wanna leave you with these three thoughts. One, when we're lesson planning, make it so engaging that's difficult for them not to participate. Find holes or gaps in that lesson where you think they could slip off. Two, the ultimate engagement is to put the learner in charge of the learning, right? We've said that about 15 times now. I'm a broken record, I know. And then last but not least, if you, the teacher, want to increase this engagement, and this is the hardest part, 
then we need to increase student activity, not teacher activity. Um, and I'm going to go right back to Michelle with the last two things in the chat. Again, I have to repeat it. It's almost like I hired Michelle to throw this in there, but student buy-in, student choice is exactly the theme of today. Um, so what I would like you to do, and we're going to give you a minute or two uh, to get logged in, um, I would like you to head on over to student.desmos.com. Um, or if you saw uh, my good friend Ryan here in the chat, also threw a link directly to this lesson. Um, once you go to student.desmos.com, uh, you can sign in with your Google account or you don't have to sign in with Google. Um, you don't have to put your real name in there. You can put a fake name um, and go ahead and get yourself logged in. And I'm going to go ahead and get into the teacher dashboard. And for those of you that were uh, celebrating Desmos math in the chat, as I could see a few of my um, my friends that are part of the club here, as I'd like to say, um, I'm so glad that you're joining us to do some more math as well, as I recognize some familiar names in there. All right. And while we're getting set up, let's just see. Oh yeah, there we go. We got a whole bunch of us in there. So I'm gonna keep this up on the screen. And while you're getting logged in, um, I wanted to give you something engaging to do while you're waiting for everyone to get signed in. I see about 78 of you that are in and we have about 150 on the call. So um, while you're getting logged in, you might notice a fun little warm up uh, with our good friend, Tom Hanks. And while you're in there, go ahead and uh, just organize your favorite Tom Hanks movie from favorite to least favorite. Maggie, I'm so sorry. I could have gone on forever. I could have made like a 50 movie choice option here. And uh, I'll tell you right now, there's many choices I left out. I know. <laughs> so your favorite movie based on what I put in there. And let's go ahead and just see what we're, what we're up to while everyone's getting logged in. We're up to about 100 people in our Desmos lesson. And we have 172 people on the call. So that's telling me about 70 of you now as we're up to 103 are just watching the show and that's okay. You don't have to jump on with us. You can watch um, as we are uh, going through this lesson, but um, I'm going to put it up there one more time um, if you want to join us. So uh, again, in the chat, Ryan put a direct link to that lesson or on my screen here, you will see that if you head on to student.desmos.com, um, <laughs> It is a great warm up question. Um, I have a good colleague of mine on my team who is obsessed with warm up questions. And um, I think she has stolen this one and I've stolen many of hers as well. So uh, let's go ahead and head on over to the teacher view here. So anyone um, that is with us right now, you're probably having to juggle some screens. So. I understand one, you're watching a webinar, you probably don't have multiple monitors up. So watching me uh, and also watching um, your own screen, I understand is difficult. So uh, the best thing about this is most of what's about to happen is gonna be driven by you and I'm gonna be able to control all of your screen. So if you just wanna hear my soothing voice, um, sorry, that's one of your dad jokes for the day. Uh, if you just want to listen to my voice as we move through this, please, uh, that is okay. You're not going to miss any part of the show, as we would say. Um, and what you're looking at on my screen, if you are watching, is this is the teacher dashboard. Uh, one of the benefits of Desmos is it does give you the ability to truly drive and be that facilitator. Um, now, before we even really get into this, a few things I'm going to show you on my screen. I'm gonna click a summary page that shows me that I have 118 of you right here. Um, but I also see that all your names are off to the left. And for anonymity purposes, especially in a national webinar like this, maybe we should change your name. So I'm gonna hit anonymize. And now you can see that I've changed all your names to famous mathematicians, super cool. Um, this is really advantageous for teachers if they're trying to keep that anonymity. Um, and they don't want students to possibly see this screen as they're navigating um, up on a projector or smart board. Uh, this gives them the ability to do exactly that. Um, now, the other thing that I have the ability to do is go right on over here and click teacher. 
and see all of your responses and the orders in which you put them in. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and click this button right here that says overlay. Now overlay is gonna give me a, a nice you know, snapshot into um, you know, where each choice or Tom Hanks movie uh, fell in our group's opinions of the best. So as you can see, it looks like a clear Forrest Gump winner. <laughs> Um, I'm just loving these math jokes right now. Um, sorry, I'm trying not to laugh at everything in the chat. Uh, but here you can see, I can see everything uh, that the group has um, listed. I'm a little bummed that that thing you do isn't um, as high as I would have liked it to be. Um, the, the nice thing to kind of book into here, what we're talking about is we're in something called Activity Builder. And so, Desmos really wants to make sure that we're not pigeonholing students and teachers into, you know, a one size fits all, a set it and forget it, like those rotisserie chicken uh, type programs. So one of the unique things you can see, um, obviously this isn't in the program. I created this for today. Uh, teachers have the ability to edit, modify, or what I like to say is this is authorable. Um, so if you want to put regional images, um, I saw somebody's down in Rocky Point. If you wanted to put some images from Puerto Penasco down there, you absolutely could do that. Um, if you want to edit your name or the name in a, in a problem around how many pumpkins are in the back of a cart, you can go in there and modify or edit that and make it more personal and customized for yourself. Um, so a really unique feature within the program. Uh, the other thing is, is you all can't move through the presentation right now. I have you locked in to this slide and I'm going to go ahead and move all of you now uh, to the next slide. And what I'd like you to do, um, we're going to do like a half a notice and wonder routine here. So um, I went on to Google as I was prepping for today's uh, session and I, I showed you a lot of books around engagement. I went into Google and I searched classroom engagement. So if you go ahead and click that video, I, I, I made that video uh, yesterday as I was prepping for this. And I want you to just tell me, what do you see? What do you see in that video? Um, what, what do you notice? What do you wonder? What do you think is missing in those images? Um, so what, do you, what, do you, uh, what are you catching as you watch that video from Google? Oh, this is great. And for anyone that's uh, not in our lesson today, and I'm going to go ahead and pick a few of these here. Um, if I'm just going to go ahead and put this on the full screen, especially if anyone's watching this recording, that means you're not seeing what's in this video. So I would like to play it really quick. Um, this was kind of alarming. Um, and also just a great example of how there's a lot of varying opinions on what student or classroom engagement looks like. But um, as you can see here in the video, and then we'll kind of highlight some things you all saw um, in these images as well. So I can see all of your answers here and I'm gonna grab a few of them. So let's see here. Now, um, if you're able to shift over to um, my screen, if you're kind of juggling between uh, that slide or that screen and mine. Um, what I did is I've been kind of reading some of your responses here. And what I've been doing is I've been capturing them. And so as you can see, these are just four responses that I've seen from you all. Um, and just based off the Google images that you were looking at, some of the things that I saw are some common themes where you know, collaboration is missing in most of these pictures, right? Uh, the images are all teacher-directed classrooms, exactly. Um, sitting at a desk, hands up, that's it. I kind of love the that's it part. Uh, students are raising their hands, but not discussing with their peers, right? So what's unique here is, let's just say this was any part of the lesson. We're going to do this too. We're going to practice it. But maybe we were discussing how to isolate a variable 
right? And I saw three different, you know, responses or procedures. And I want students to kind of have some discourse around those. Um, I can do what's called snapshots. And this is an absolute form of engagement that's going to generate more student to student discourse. Uh, and Desiree, absolutely. We can also throw um, in the chat here. Um, I just threw it right there in the chat. Uh, if you want to, oh, Shannon's on it too. Look at that. We're all multitasking. Uh, here you could see, you know, that I could put in a question right here, and we could all uh, discuss that question um, as a class. But what this tool does is it provides teachers the ability to capture student responses quickly and then have the meaningful discourse around that. If you think about, um, you know, those five practices of orchestrating discourse in the classroom, one of the hardest things to do is actually select student work and then sequence it, sequence it in a way to where we can have meaningful classroom conversations. This snapshot tool gives teachers that ability to become big brother and really dive in and grab that work as it's happening instead of waiting till after class when you've turned in all those papers and you now can see how students are feeling. Um, it really does give you a, uh, an ability to really facilitate those conversations quicker. So let's go ahead, let's get into some actual math, right? Um, and I was thinking to myself, how, how do I engage a bunch of adults, right? We're, we're talking about Desmos that's built for, you know, six through Algebra One students right now. Um, and I thought, what would this group, what would perk their interests? And yesterday, um, I don't want any eye rolls, don't leave my session, please. But I filled up my gas tank and it was $4.99 here in Arizona. I'm sure it's pretty bad for a lot of you as well. Um, that was a lot of money. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you to our warm up activity. And hopefully you're all starting to get pulled into um, our warm up. Kat, now um, I'll kind of talk about that a little bit at the end of the uh, lesson here. I have some strategies, but I will tell you um, that's something that we're definitely considering and putting on the roadmap too. But I have some tricks uh, to kind of address that as well. Now, as you're all getting pulled in, as I see a few of you are still trying uh, to kind of get in there, um, you are going to see hopefully a problem around uh, fuel in our gas tanks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on the student view here. There we go. Now, um, I've noticed a few of you have discovered that I've given you the ability to move left and right between two different slides. Um, that gives you the ability to uh, finish a warm up or finish an activity without having to wait for me, the teacher, to drive your screen. Now, because uh, gas is you know, a touchy subject right now, you'll be able to see that you can, uh, one, drag uh, the fuel tank. Um, you're gonna be able to drag that fuel tank and you're gonna also notice a few things. Uh, one, maybe that fuel tank doesn't give you the ability to create it uh, or make it full, right? Um, as a teacher, I have a tremendous around, amount of support in what's called our teacher moves and student supports. So here we would actually have the ability to use a notice and wonder routine. What do you notice uh, with this type of activity? Um, I have some sample responses as a uh, teacher. I can go in and see specific sample responses like, why can't I fill up the whole entire gas tank? And then on that next screen, you'll notice you can go from left to right. On that next screen, you're going to notice the ability uh, for students to then look at more of a graphical representation. Um, I can see right now um, a lot of you are starting to respond to 
um, the actual question, what would the graph look like, look like if it included every possible point for this car? And so, you know, we did look at some silly, uh, not silly, but non-mathical responses when we were talking about the Google images thing. So now you can see, I've got some great responses around things like linear and proportional relationships, linear functions. Um, I'm getting a lot of mathematical terms here. And so one of the other things that's unique about Desmos math specifically is that we will give students the ability to use informal language before we move into that formal language. And so anytime students are using formal language, I do wanna highlight that. I wanna capture it with my snapshots. Um, maybe I'll make an album of it because I'm seeing, you know, for the next class, I wanna make sure we have that conversation. Um, and so I have a lot of data um, around how my class is uh, responding to this specific activity. The other unique thing that I have as a teacher is the ability to, to intervene for those students that are maybe not on task or are not able to respond uh, appropriately. Maybe they don't have what's in their tool belt. And so I can identify those struggling students um, immediately with this type of task. So um, I just had two people actually uh, incognito or whatever you call that hidden message me uh, that they have never seen this activity. It's a great activity. Um, and I think all of us uh, care a lot more about um, our gas prices um, than we have in the last few years. So um, what I'm gonna give you the opportunity to do so that you can kind of see how we move from that concrete pictorial to abstract is I am going to stop the pacing and I'm gonna give you the ability to move uh, between the next four slides. So technically I am uh, limiting your pacing, but I want you to uh, kind of click through, go in there, mess it up, get things wrong. Um, but I'd like you to play uh, with this activity. Notice the types of questions that are happening. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna remind you of a few things that we talked about at the very beginning. Um, and so let me go ahead and put this overlay screen on and let you play a little bit. So we had Dan Meyer on about three weeks ago, and we've had a lot of guests on this webinar series, and we've touched on a lot of topics from what amazing math looks like to what amazing focus looks like. And today we're talking specifically about engagement. Now, to kind of recap some things that we touched on earlier, the big buzzwords around student-centered learning was student choice, problem solving, um, being able to uh, collaborate with their peers. Now, if we were in the classroom today, I would absolutely be using these instructional routines. We would be having our students use things like critique, clarify, and connect, notice, and wonder, um, using these routines to have students have those class conversations. But the other thing that you might notice, depending on which uh, screen you're on in this activity, you might notice the fact that I'm also available to see student responses real time in my dashboard as a student. So I can actually see how students are responding to these tasks as it's happening. Um, and so you could see your peers as responses. Um, but the big picture here is that the students are driving the learning, right? This isn't a stand and deliver uh, teacher on stage. Um, you all are providing some incredible data for me right now. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to kind of go in and snoop in on some of your work. Oh, this is great. Now, just in a brief amount of time, I'm, I'm assuming many of us that have taught math or even taught around this topic, it's usually a struggle, especially comparing our tables to our graphs. Uh, but being able to see that side by side, see our work move through the screens, uh, kind of gives the students the ability to uh, build that deeper understanding, move to those DOK3, DOK4 levels um, at their own pace, right? Um, instead of doing that conceptual procedural and application um, all in 45 minutes, we're going to give students the ability to build 
uh, that conceptual before we move into some of those procedural skills. Um, I'm absolutely loving what I am seeing here. Um, let's go ahead and look at some of these responses. For anyone watching my screen, I can, I'm literally watching certain students just drawing right on a coordinate plane. Um, I had a teacher recently tell me um, that they do have Apple pencils in their class. And so they're required, <laughs> we're drawing hearts here, love it. Uh, they're using Apple pencils or they're using their track pads uh, and they're requiring students to show their thinking and reasoning right there. Um, on the, on the screens, um, you know, or handing in that paper pencil to show their work too. But um, I do have the ability to see you work real time and it gives you a lot of um, supports, you know, and being able to support those students. So for anyone that got to that last slide, the ready for more one, the ready for more one was really unique. I'm kind of looking to see if anyone's kind of tested the where we're at. Uh, looks like we have a few that have played in there. So you're gonna be able to go in and start to look at um, how many miles per gallon uh, a plane, a train, and I believe a cruise ship can get. Um, but then also what is the most fuel efficient? So then they start to relate it back to fuel efficiency. Um, and I even have some teacher moves in here around, well, what if there were four people in a car versus one? So some unique probing questions when we think about fuel efficiency uh, within this specific task. And so as you can see on my screen for anyone that's watching the recording, um, I could go in and select a plane and I can see, okay, um, you get about 3000 there. After average plane has a hundred passengers. I could go in and do this with um, cruise ships. And then we could start comparing them to their impact on the environment. And then also which one was the most fuel efficient. And then once I do that, I'll be able to hit share with class and then you're able to see student responses real time, which is super cool. Um, now, before we kind of uh, head towards the finale here, I wanted to try another activity with us all, especially with such a massive group of teachers. We're at 151 teachers right now. so. Um, what I wanted to do, I'm gonna stop pacing and let's go ahead and bring you into slide 19. So hopefully you're all getting dragged right now. I'm sucking you all into to this slide. Uh, it should say play a few rounds of polygraph and I'm just gonna kind of be the narrator here, right? I'm gonna facilitate this webinar like I would facilitate this activity in the classroom. So polygraphs are the coolest. Um, Kat, my kids love this. I, I, I wish I could pick your brain more because anytime I get to talk to teachers about polygraphs, I get a little nerdy. Um, this could be anything and everything. You could be doing a polygraph around parabolas. It could be um, a representation of graphs and different quadrants. Um, but what I'd like you to do, go ahead and hit start playing. For any of you that have played, you know, that classic game of guess who, um, what you're going to end up doing, you're going to get paired with someone on this webinar right now. And you are going to actually have a yes or no uh, back and forth with someone on the webinar right now. And you're going to be able to um, really look at their responses. Um, you're going to be able to try and guess their card. Um, I'm going to kind of just narrate as you're working because I don't want you to think you're missing anything on my screen. So just go ahead and stay on your screen. Uh, I'm going to kind of snoop on what you all are up to. And um, what you're doing basically right now is you're asking your partner yes or no questions and trying to eliminate or guess which card they picked. And like I said, this is throughout our program. Um, teachers, I, I think there's a million reasons why you obviously love this. I'm going to point out or just bring up some of the things I've heard from other teachers. Uh, one, let's go all the way back. I believe it was Michelle. I'm sorry if I forgot the name. I think it's Michelle. I was talking about student-centered student choice. Uh, students are picking their shape. 
students are coming up with their questions. You are going to see an incredible amount of engagement when you do this in the class. A lot of laughing, a lot of frustration when they're getting it wrong. Um, when we think about that checklist, again, of student-directed learning, this is marking or checking off so many of those boxes. Um, they're planning, they're problem solving, right? They're trying to do it in the least amount of moves. Um, and then it becomes a class competition as well. So um, I know two weeks ago, um, my good friend Damon did another activity that we do have in this program. I, I can't show you all the cool things, but I just have to bring up another one that reminds me of polygraphs and that's our challenge creators where students can go in and create their own extension opportunities and have other students solve their challenges. But just with the uh, gas tank activity um, and, oh, I can see someone didn't guess the correct shape. Very fun. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and give it another shot. Uh, with that activity and what you're seeing with this polygraph, it's all about the students. The students drive the conversations and through our instructional routines and through the pedagogical teacher moves that we have embedded in here that support you know, teachers implementing this type of um, uh, instructional approach, we've got you covered. And there's so many programs out there that absolutely can support this type of learning. Um, and sorry, you keep getting disconnected, Deanna. No problem, uh, I apologize if that's happening to you. Um, I just want to give a few of you who are uh, still solving your questions. Um, I do have to highlight one here. This is great. So if anyone is watching and not paying or not working through the polygraphs, I just wanted to highlight one of the polygraphs here and it kind of shows you it took them four questions. The first question was, does your card have curved lines? No. And then we asked, do any lines intersect? No. Is your figure closed? Also, some really good formal language in here, right? So we would highlight that in the classroom and four sided figure. Um, there was only one yes to all those questions, too, which is really unique, right? So sometimes there's a good learning moment there, too, that. Uh, a no can become a yes for our students. So uh, when they're problem solving and they're thinking of eliminating questions on uh, maybe that multiple choice, right? This is also the same type of strategy they're using is using yes and no questions around those. So um, I know we're kind of heading towards the end and we do have some questions that you all uh, need some answers to. Um, I am going to not kick you out of the polygraph if any of you are right at the home run here or at the at the you're crossing home plate. So I'm gonna keep that slide open. And what I'd like for you to do is uh, just for some feedback around some of the activities you saw and some of the things that you heard today and some bad dad jokes. Um, if you could go ahead and uh, once you're done with the polygraph, go ahead and click on slide 19 and just give us a little bit of feedback on what you saw. And then if you ever uh, need some support um, or want to visit uh, teacher.desmos.com to get some more information or sign up for a free trial, any of that, um, the third click will take you there as well. Um, I know we have about uh, 10 minutes or so, and I know we have a handful of questions, Shannon. Um, so I'm gonna let uh, those finishing up their polygraph finish that. Um, but any questions or things that uh, we didn't really get to answer um, as we are kind of heading down the stretch here. Yes, I'm coming back. Let me share my screen. When that just says Q and A. Um, we did have a few questions. This is so console. Sorry, I'm getting excited about the people. <laughs> no, I get all excited about the people getting all. Like I was getting excited as I was going through all the activities. You were like, I was like super pumped, like giggling to myself because this is so great. Um, so one question I saw did you correctly hear this is only for grades six plus. So Desmos Math Six Eight is for well, Six A One is for grades six through Algebra One but there are plans to expand that and Desmos Classroom reaches all grades. 
uh, James, I don't know if you wanted to elaborate on that at all, but. Right, yep. So Desmos, at, just like Shannon said, we are looking at a six through algebra one currently offered. Um, Amplify is currently in the works of basically creating a super K-12 around um, all of this. So um, back to school. Um, down the road next year we should start to be able to provide samples for that um, and uh, you can kind of see what k5 would look like and please look out for webinars and things like that too as we start to showcase or unveil uh, those new resources um, but then uh, we are also looking uh, especially at k5 but all grade levels anyone that wants to be a uh, kick the tires with that new program um, we're all looking for um, sites that would maybe want to uh, test drive it for us. Um, so we will provide links for that too, if you'd like to do that. Um, but you absolutely would have access uh, for geometry and algebra two when that whole K-12 comes out. Um, and I don't think I missed anything there. But um, so for all of you Desmos fans, because I know there's a lot of you on the call um, that were curious about the K-5 part two, that means you would absolutely have activity builder and be able to do all the, the fun things that we do it. Uh, the middle school level, they're going to be able to have those types of tools too and monitoring tools, which is super exciting. Right. Um, other questions we had um, to show the case student work if they were from paper, can we take a picture and add to Desmos? And another person also asked um, if students are working through the test individually, how do they collaborate? And I know one person did respond in the chat saying that um, they can absolutely take their own pictures and submit it to Desmos. So I didn't know if James if you had anything else to add to that, but I love that someone in the chat knew the answer and submitted immediately. Yep. And then the other thing to take note of, and, and this is also in the instructional support too, is that it doesn't need to be a one-to-one -one situation. Um, we have a lot of these activities where um, pairs or even threes um, are sitting at one device. A lot of these activities you don't necessarily or have to be sitting on the device and doing every little piece of the uh, manipulation, right? Instead, uh, this could be, you know, a, a three to one situation. Um, this doesn't need to be uh, forcing all students to be on the computer for 45 minutes. Um, the other thing is a lot of us uh, don't know the fact that there are a lot of lessons in Desmos that are strictly in print, right? Uh, so um, to get that screen time and that fatigue um, and eliminate that, uh, you do have the ability for these paper-based lessons to kind of uh, get them off of the, the uh, device as well. And you're more, uh, than, welcome. Like, more than welcome. <laughs> I love that someone asked, could you make the Hank slide available in Decimal 6, 8, beginning of year slide? Well, you know, I'm. it's not that hard for me. if. I absolutely can make the Hank slide available. It uh -huh. was a great warm up. As I put in the chat, a wonderful warm up slide. Everyone has very, very strong opinions on Tom Hanks movies. So this was really good warm up. And I love that someone asked if we could make it available. Um, um, if, if you, if you give me, uh, if it, if I will, I absolutely am paying attention. I'm looking at my other screen. I will throw it in another set. Uh, in another activity by itself really quick. And I can throw that activity link in the chat for anyone that does have Desmos. You can you can absolutely steal my Hanks, yeah. Hanks for being in our here. Math, <laughs> in our math email list, we will make sure it's included in the back to school slide. Like there you go, let's do that. Shannon. Collections, I will make sure it's included in the top Hanks slide. All right, we'll do it that way so that I can answer the questions. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, Thomas said, this is also cool and concerned that building these lessons take a long time. Like, how would you respond to this concern? Uh, great question. And, and that brings up a common misconception around Desmos. So Desmos, you know, we started as uh, the, the king of calculators, right? And then Activity Builder was the next evolution. From there, it is a full six through algebra one curriculum. Um, so a lot of people think it's just all those teacher created activities that were so popular on so many sites. It is a full curriculum. So um, you don't have to be creating anything. Um, I know the Hank slide I created, um, you absolutely have um, full coverage of your state standards uh, through Desmos Math. 
um, with the full assessments for beginning and end of year, end of unit, beginning of unit, lots of progress monitoring tools for formative assessment. So uh, to bumper sticker everything I'm saying, it is a full curriculum um, for sixth, seventh, eighth, algebra one, and will be uh, even more robust for K-12 um, as we head into uh, the future. And then we have another question, thank you. Um, so I know the answer, but just have you answer it. <laughs> um, does Desmos have activities where two or three students can play at the same time that's not a polygraph? I know the answer is yes. Um, where the students can receive a group grade. Can you share those activities you're speaking of? I know there are like a million activities in Desmos um, that kids can do, multiple students where they receive a group grade, but like anything you wanna add, James? Um, I can't necessarily cite a lesson three and unit four off the top of my head, but um, yeah, you know, like I was thinking about like there's a rubber ducky one in sixth or sixth grade where like they have to find the star on the bottom of the rubber ducky and then the group is trying to figure out the probability of how many times they would find the rubber. It's a carnival game. Um, I think it's called something duckies <laughs> off the top of my head. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities. Um, I will say polygraph is probably the most popular um, in this aspect. Um, but then also check out, you know, uh, what some of the communities are up to, too. Um, and I do see some of the people are also chiming in that are uh, proficient with Desmos as well. But um, yeah, and if you're on our map, um, lit interest list at all, we do share Desmos classroom activities every month that are like free activities that you can try with your students. That are right. Yeah, so there yeah. are, you know, the, mar the marble, there's a lot of marble slide games for sure. Um, Cat, you're on fire. The transformation golf is fantastic where you're trying to put in different uh, coordinates uh, to have your ball run into a star. If you just type golf into Desmos, you'll, you'll find that one pretty quick. Um, the other piece too, uh, exactly to what Jessica's saying too, is you can actually have students log in as a group. Um, and so that they, uh, the teacher can actually see who all is in that response, meaning which students were a part of this response, which is pretty cool. You're at the end of the school year. How long will be the free trial be available? Um, it depends on when you book it. I was yeah. <laughs> I know she needs to be had another response to that. I was glossing over that one, but... I don't want to promise anything, but you might yeah. be able to reach out and we could possibly extend it depending on your situation, Kat. Just <laughs> maybe reach out to us. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure how long ago you actually signed up, though, too. Yeah, and I see the other one, our adoption year is 24, 25. Will K5 be ready by then? I know, James, if you had any insider information to share. Say that one more time. Oh, I had to scroll down. There we go. Uh, 24, 25, will K-5 be ready for then? Um, it will be ready, samples will be ready. That will be, um, from what, I, what I'm hearing, I'm not gonna promise to any timelines, they might be able to pilot around that time, but I would not promise you anything like that. So- um, I'm trying to get everything perfect. It's a, it's a yeah. tricky situation, but we're trying to make sure it's absolutely perfect for everyone and all the students. Exactly. I would love to know the best way to learn more about Activity Builder. Are there any advanced webinars? There are advanced webinars for this classroom. Um, if you go to Ryan, if you would drop those links in the chat, there <laughs> are our math webinars page. We have lots of dozens classroom webinars ready for you. We have intermediate, beginner, and advanced webinars where you can learn more about Activity Builder, how to get started, literally anything you need to know about Desmos Classroom, we are ready for you to learn. Um, are there specific STEM activities on Desmos? There are a lot of math ones, I tell you that. Right, <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 Again, I don't know if I could come up with one right off the top of my head other than, um, you know, for example, this was gonna actually start to get into the, uh, with the gas activities we were doing, it was gonna to start to get into the economic impact. Um, there's gonna be a lot of 
I know there's a few space problems where we're tying in things like that. Um, the stem connections are there. I don't know if um, I have anything other to share other than it's it's definitely all integrated. Um, yeah, again, and I do work for content for both math and science Amplify products. So I am very adamantly trying to make the connections between our math and science products for everyone. So there may be more to come, just letting you know, but there are a million math activities in Desmouth. I, I can guarantee you that. Oh yeah. Um, and Pat, I am so excited that you're thinking of using, you've been so active in this chat and I appreciate you. And I am so happy yeah. that you're thinking of using Desmos. Like it is amazing. Just from using it during these webinars for the activities that everyone shared, I am impressed and excited. So I'm very happy, Kat, that you're, you're debating it. Um, I do not think we have any other questions right now. James, thank you so much. This was amazing. Very, I, so appreciative of everyone's engagement. I'm so happy that all of you have taken the time out of your busy, busy Mondays to participate. Um, I'm sharing a few more math resources. If you would like to learn more about our suite of products, you can find more ways to make math amazing um, with a free trial to Desmos Math 681. You can also, we have a new efficacy study, a uh, research study about how we improve student outcomes with Desmos Math 68. Um, we're very excited about it, so please check it out. You can always hear more tips and strategies in the Math Teacher Lounge podcast with Dan Meyer. Um, he interviews people every month for different strategies and research. This season, we're focusing on math anxiety and how to like get students looking forward, get them out of the habit of math anxiety. Um, so it's a very, very exciting season. We would love for you to listen. Um, and you can always check out more free math PD opportunities with amplify.com slash math webinars. Um, this is the last one of the what makes uh, what amazing math looks like. But we would love for you to uh, look at some other opportunities over the summer. And thank you so much for joining today. Thank you, James. You were amazing. And we are so happy that all of you joined. Thank you. And we will hopefully Thanks. see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Happy, uh, happy Monday. <laughs>